Hey everyone, Chef Adam Glick here. You'll often find me cooking outdoors and over a campfire, but today I'm in the kitchen. I'm using the Marcellin Iron Stack Collection. In this set, you can do everything from the grilling, the frying, sauteing, poaching, boiling, literally any cooking style right here, all in one. In my world, it's incredibly important to me to save space and utilize everything. When I'm using a set like this one, I'm able to create everything that I could ever want, and yet it's all gonna pack away nicely in my cupboard, or my truck camper, or my boat, or whatever the situation is. It's pretty incredible what you're capable of making with just one cook set. In this Iron Stack collection, you have the Dutch oven, the skillet, the grill pan, and a universal lid. The nice thing about the lid is it's self-basting. You can put it on any one of these three pots or pans, and it provides a moisture locking seal, the grill pan. These raised ridges or grooves are gonna effectively recreate that of an outdoor grill. Simply set it on top of your stovetop, get it nice and hot, and now you can create chef style sear marks on your proteins or breads, whatever you put on top. This is the skillet. It's the chef's knife of pans. You need a nice ergonomic handle, wide surface area, polished face, super smooth, nothing's gonna stick to this with a little bit of oil. This is your Dutch oven. These particularly high walls are great for soups, stocks, sauces, any larger item that needs a long time to cook. You can give it a good sear on the stovetop, put the universal lid on top, and pop it in the oven. The beauty of cast iron pans, you can cook anything you want in these every single day. They are heirlooms. This is something you can pass down to your grandkids. I choose to use a cast iron because it's perfect for me as a chef. This is a brand new pan and it comes pre-seasoned. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's totally ready to cook on. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of oil, just a dab right in the center. And I'm gonna fully coat this whole pan. I wanna cover every single square inch of this pan from top to bottom. Any time you clean a cast iron pan, you have to finish it with this process. By seasoning up this pan, not only are we preventing rust, but we're also making an incredibly non-stick surface. It only takes a minute. The second you're done cleaning and drying your cast iron pan, rub it down with some oil, and just like that, fully coated pan, we're gonna wanna pop that in the oven at 450 degrees for about an hour. There it is. It's been about an hour. Perfectly seasoned pan. You see it's nice and shiny, solid black, and ready for your next use. The beautiful thing about a stackable set like this is I'm able to cook an entire meal, and that's what we're gonna do right now. Let's begin with the item that takes the longest. In this case, it's my roasted chicken. To do the roasted chicken, I'm gonna use the grill pan. The grill pan's really nice for this kind of thing because I can actually put some score marks onto the chicken. Cooking on a cast iron pan is very different than cooking on a typical pan. It takes time to heat it up. We're gonna preheat that for at least five or 10 minutes. Get it up to temperature. In the meantime, let's spatchcock our chicken. Spatchcocking a chicken is all about removing the spine. Once the spine's out, flip it back over and break the breastbone. Finally, take your knife, run it between the two breasts. And just like that, you've got a spatchcock chicken. Coat these heavily with olive oil, salt, and pepper. I'm gonna put this chicken skin side down. I love that sound. All I want to do now is turn this 45 degrees. I'm using an offset spatula. While we're getting those grill marks, let's work on the mirepoix. That's carrots, celery, and onions. Look at that beautiful golden brown grill marks from those grooves in the cast iron pan. You want a little vegetable bed for that chicken to roast on top of. Let's get this chicken in the oven. Let's get started on those green beans. Now, I'd like to use the exact same pot twice. So we're gonna blanch these in some hot salted water, remove them, replace the water, and then cook our potatoes in the same pot. The act of blanching is essentially boiling a vegetable as briefly as possible to bring out its flavor and color. Throw that lid on top to help them steam. Next, let's get into the mashed potatoes. While that water boils, peel up some potatoes. We'll cut these extra small and put them in some boiling water. 
while these potatoes are cooking away. I like to spice up my green beans a little bit with some bacon, salt. Let's go ahead and put that in our skillet. Just wanna render out all that fat. Be sure to save that fat because it's a great way to season your pans later. Okay, now that our bacon's fully cooked and the grease has been drained, let's add some onions and that garlic. It's time to add our green beans. Now that our green beans are extra tasty, let's take that universal lid, pop it on top, keep those warm in the oven. All right, so our potatoes are fully cooked through. Let's drain out that water. We drained out all that water, but I wanna put those potatoes back on the stove or in the oven, open air, and cook off some of that water. So we're adding butter, heavy cream, salt, and pepper. All that's left is to mash them up. I'm gonna mash them in the exact same pot that I cooked them in. Perfectly warm green beans. Let's grab that chicken. Golden brown, looking good. All we have left is to remove that chicken, let it rest, and make a sauce. This pan is full of saucy flavor. All we need to do is add some chicken stock, a little bit of cream, and reduce it down. We're gonna finish off this beautiful sauce with some extra salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna add some fresh herbs. We're using fresh thyme and a little bit of rosemary. Mm. That's it. That's absolutely perfect. Now that our sauce is completely finished, let's put that chicken right back in it. Garnish it up with some more fresh herbs. Just like that, three delicious courses, one iron stack by Marcellin. Let's talk about how to clean your cast iron. With proper maintenance and care, this thing will last your entire life. Start by removing all of the excess food. Then we're gonna start with a soft bristle brush. If this doesn't work, you might have to move on to some salt. And if that doesn't work, you might move on to a chain mail scrubber. Finish it off with a little bit of water, dry it on the stovetop or in your oven, and once it's completely dry, rub a bunch of oil. Could be bacon fat, olive oil, Crisco, any kind of oil. Rub it all over that thing. After that, it's ready to go for your next run.